Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuang. Let's get to know Jaw the Camarasaurus. Camarasaurus is a genus of sauropod dinosaurs that flourished in the Jurassic period. Numerous Camarasaurus fossils have been unearthed, allowing us to know the full look of this dinosaur and conduct a relatively accurate restoration. We are pretty familiar with Camarasaurus. Currently, this genus contains four valid species. The type species, also the largest of this genus, is the Camarasaurus supremus. Ijor the Camarasaurus was created based on this species. The other three species, Camarasaurus lentus, Camarasaurus grandis and Camarasaurus lewisi, were smaller, not as massive as the type species. Generally, the average length of the three smaller species was about 15 meters, while Camarasaurus supremus could be up to 18 meters. Larger specimens, such as this one, display a length of more than 20 meters. It is the largest and the most advanced Camarasaurus that lived the latest. First, let's take a look at the overall shape of Camarasaurus. This dinosaur possessed a very typical sauropod body shape. We can take it as a primitive version of titanosaurs, with a body form prominently different from the diplodocoids or dicreosaurids of the time. Its body shape was similar to that of Brachiosaurus. Its entire body was chubby, and it could raise its head very high. While its neck was not very long, it might be longer than its torso, but shorter than that of Brachiosaurus or Giraffe Titan. Its tail was not particularly long either, and so was its torso, giving it a chunky and compact appearance. The overall shape is like this. Compared with other dinosaurs, its legs were relatively long, and its torso was pretty broad. From the top, its body appeared stout, and the entire neck and the shoulder seemed to integrate into a hole. The neck transitioned to the shoulder in a streamline, and the base of the neck was very thick. The cervical vertebrae, especially those near the thoracic vertebrae, were very wide, contributing to the thick look of the neck when viewed from above. Then, let's move on to its head. Many Camarasaurus skull fossils have been discovered, so we can accurately restore its head. Its head was relatively tall and round, with huge, arched nasal cavities. Many people might mistakenly think the name Camarasaurus, chambered lizard, derived from its nose. However, it was not. The name refers to the hollow chambers formed inside its arched dorsal vertebrae. Its entire head was a bit like Brachiosaurus, which was pretty tall. It had huge nasal cavities and relatively large eye sockets. Its lower jaw was very deep and the nose part formed huge cavities. A few complete Camarasaurus skull fossils display dents in the nose near the front of the mouth. Some scholars believe that this indicates cartilage is attached here, which can indirectly prove that the external nares should be under this cartilage. So we now generally make the Camarasaurus nostrils at this location. In some early restorations, we can see its nostrils were placed at a higher position. Now we know that they were possibly at this lower position. The large dome shape made the entire nasal cavity form a relatively large sphere. So when we restored it, we made it something like this. The nose, as a whole, was a relatively bulged structure with two nostrils underneath. When it was alive, this part was soft, so the nose might be somewhat bright colored. Next is about its mouth. The snout of Camarasaurus was thick, especially its lower jaw. If you look at its fossils, you can see that the exposed parts of the tooth roots of many Camarasaurus are very long. Some fossilized tooth roots display some keratin fossil structures similar to mummification. Therefore, this part of the Camarasaurus mouth might have a relatively hard structure similar to crocodile skin, which tightly wraps the tooth roots and exposes the tips. Its mouth looked a bit like that of modern turtles. Some turtles have some serrations on the edge of their beaks. Camarasaurus' relatively hard mouth and tooth shape were somewhat like today's turtles, forming a hard rake structure, which helps this sauropod pull leaves off trees. 
Then, about the forelimbs. Some complete forelimb fossils of Camarasaurus demonstrate that its shoulder blades are relatively vertical, standing upright like this. This allows its neck to be lifted very high. Its dorsal vertebrae formed an angle that tilted backward. The bones of its forelimbs and hindlimbs are well preserved, enabling us to reconstruct their complete shapes. Camarasaurus forelimbs had five fingers arranged in a crescent-shaped, hoof-like structure. The soles of its forefeet showed a flat crescent shape, unlike the circular, pillar-like shape formed by the digits of some later sauropods. The hoofs of its forelimbs were narrower. It had a thumb on the inside with a large claw. There were no other nails on its hands, forming a flesh hoof. Its hind limbs had three visible nails, on each foot despite having five toes. The other two toes were wrapped in skin and had no nails on the surface. Camarasaurus footprints are also quite common and pretty recognizable. Scientists have combined its forelimbs to form footprints, which perfectly matched the found footprint fossils. Its footprint fossils also proved that the soles of its feet had this structure. Now, let's look at the back half of its body. The entire front half of the Camarasaurus body tilted upward, and its pelvis appeared a trapezoid when viewed from the side, resulting in its tail tilting upward. It also tilted upward when connected to the dorsal vertebrae, and its entire back formed a shape like this. Therefore, when restoring the back half of its body, we made the tail slightly tilted upward. But, in the normal state, when the front body tilts upward, the tail is almost horizontally extended backward. This structure can also ensure that its front half tilts upward, and the posterior tail has a horizontal angle. The Camarasaurus tail had many muscles attached. From its well-developed transverse processes, you can tell that its tail base had massive, thick muscles, creating this shape. The Camarasaurus tail was not as exaggerated long as that of the Diplodocus, which can form a curved tail, so the end of its tail may not be as flexible as the super long tail of the Diplodocus. But the tail was still a very powerful weapon for this dinosaur. Good, the above concludes the restoration process of Camarasaurus. Thank you all.